iPhone 15 Ultra. Yes, that is what's rumored to be coming next year alongside the rest of the iPhone 15 lineup. And yes, that name is from the Apple Watch Ultra, which is definitely the best Apple Watch ever made. And there's gonna be some exclusive features on that model that we're gonna be talking about in terms of the new leaks and rumors. And I'm gonna answer the question based off of my experience with the iPhone 14 Pro Max for the last couple of weeks. Should you buy this one this year or should you just hold off and wait for the 15 Ultra or one of the other 15s next year? Let's talk about it. Now getting into the actual leaks for the iPhone 15 lineup, way back in January, the analyst Jeff Poo said that the iPhone 15 Pro was expected to feature the periscope lens with up to 10 times optical zoom, which is what the current S22 Ultra from Samsung has. And let me tell you, it greatly improves the far zoom performance of the cameras. That would be awesome. However, going down to July, Ming-Chu Kuo actually said that the periscope lens would be exclusive to the iPhone 15 Pro Max in 2023, and that itself could be renamed the iPhone 15 Ultra, which some other reports I've talked about, which I'm going to get into. However, he does say that he's expecting it to have a 6x optical zoom, which would be exactly two times more zoom than the current 3x that we have on the 13 Pro and 14 Pro models. That would be a great increase in quality. And not only that, but also getting sensor shift stabilization, which actually matters a lot for long zoom cameras. Not only that, but back in May, Ming-Chi Kuo also said that the iPhone 15 lineup, the entire thing, would be getting USB-C in 2023. Now that is a huge deal because Apple's been on Lightning for the last decade, and that's exactly what they said when they first introduced Lightning. So it's exciting that we're finally gonna switch over to USB-C next year. Now going even further in July, ming Shiko also said that the latest iPhone chips, the newest ones, would remain exclusive to the Pro models for the iPhone 15 and beyond, just like we got with the 14 lineup where the Pro and Pro Max have the new A16 chip, while the regular models are still stuck with the A15, he basically says that this trend is gonna remain basically beyond forever. And then interestingly, in September, ming Chi Kuo also said that Apple's gonna further separate the devices in the iPhone 15 lineup with different features. So they're gonna keep adding more to the Pro models while keeping the regular models kind of further behind. So it looks like Apple really, really wants people to spend more money on those pro models. Now, back in May, we had a report from the analyst Ross Young, who's basically the best Apple display leaker out there. He said that Apple is expected to replace the notch on the regular 14 models with the new pill and hole on all of the iPhone 15 models. Now, of course, we didn't get the pill and hole. We got the full pill with the dynamic island. And he says, as you can see in this graphic right here from his tweet, that every single iPhone 15 is gonna have the pill plus hole, which of course we do have that hardware wise right now on the Pro, and next year there's gonna be no more notch on any iPhone, so that's why we recommended people to buy the Pro model so you don't feel like you have an outdated notched iPhone with the regular iPhone 14s. And now here is where the ultra rumors come in. On September 25th, Mark Gurman, the most reliable Apple leaker, said that the iPhone 15 Ultra could replace the Pro Max model next year. Now, he was the first one to hint at this, but we did have another leaker, Leaks Apple Pro, who was the first to make this claim. But of course, Mark Gurman solidified it by saying that the Ultra is coming. Just like the Apple Watch Ultra being the highest end, most expensive model, the Ultra is gonna be the new Pro Max, which means that Apple's likely gonna pack it, just jam pack it with a bunch of extra features, and they're likely gonna hike up the price to make it worth it or to make you feel like you want to pay more for the ultra name, you know? And now here is a very interesting report from Ming-Chi Kuo saying that the iPhone 14 Pro Max's popularity could lead to more differentiation between the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max, which is where it makes sense to have that new ultra name. Because the Pro Max is so 
popular, this 14 Pro Max model, which I absolutely love. It has the better battery life. Even though the always on display kind of kicks down the battery life, it's still very good compared to previous years. But Ming Shikuo was saying that the Pro Max accounts for about 60% of the total order increase of Pro models which is absolutely massive, increasing Apple's average sales price. And that is huge for Apple, and it makes sense for why they would want to make a new Ultra model. Now, Ross Young actually gave some reports to his super followers showing that the 14 Pro Max now has a big advantage with nearly one third of the volume of all the iPhone 14 shipments, which is huge. And you can see that right here in this super tweet, which by the way, you know, I signed up for super following Ross Young, five bucks a month, definitely worth it to see a chart like this. And thankfully he let me show off a couple of these super tweets to you guys. But look at that, Pro Max model right here, bigger chunk than all the other ones. I honestly don't think that this has happened before. That's huge for the Pro Max model, and it makes sense why Apple would want to do the Ultra. Now moving forward, this next leak is going to be huge for people deciding if they want to wait for the iPhone 15 lineup or not, specifically for the Pro and the Ultra models. TSMC has a new second generation 3 nanometer process that they're going to be working on next year, and that's going to be for the M3 chip and the A17 going into those 15 Pro and Ultra models. That is going to be a brand new process, brand new node, and there's going to be some huge efficiency improvements with that in terms of battery life. So I'm expecting a really nice boost to battery life for those Pro and Ultra models next year. I think that is going to be a huge selling point for those. Now this past Sunday, Mark Gurman released another one of his Power On newsletters, and within that he said that there's going to be no Touch ID for the iPhone 15 lineup next year. Yes, that means no under the screen touch ID. Now I know that's been rumored for a long time, but I honestly think that with Face ID being so good, I don't think Touch ID is coming ever. I think Apple's just gonna scrap the idea. And even for the new iPhone SE 4, I think they're just gonna give it a notch with Face ID, just like the iPhone XR. I don't think Touch ID is coming back ever. Prove me wrong, maybe you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. And then now, just the other day, we got a report saying that the new European law says that iPhones must use USB Type-C by 2024, which is making USB-C more likely next year. Apple's probably gonna wanna switch over their iPhones and then all of their accessories to USB-C to make it all work in that lineup. So it looks like that law has finally passed. But here is where it gets even more interesting. Joe Resignal from Mac Rumors is predicting it now, that was September 16th, almost a month ago, that Apple will market the iPhone 15 Pro as having a Thunderbolt port while the standard models get a standard USB-C. More differentiation. Now, what if only the iPhone 15 Ultra model gets the Thunderbolt port because it's ultra, it's more expensive, it gets the best of the best features. That would actually make sense for Apple to do, to give it a Thunderbolt port. That is insane and I think he might actually be right. Now on top of that, here's where it gets even crazier. Majin Buu, he's had some very reliable leaks in the past and according to one of his sources, the new iPhone 15 Ultra is gonna have two front cameras. Not one, but two, which is insane. It's gonna have USB-C, and it's gonna start from 256 gigs of storage, which totally makes sense. They could even give it 8K video recording just for the Ultra model with that 256 gigs. And then the iPhone 15 Pro is instead gonna start with 128, it's still gonna have USB-C, but only one front camera. That is kinda crazy, and I wonder what Apple's gonna do with the second camera. Maybe some kind of ultra-wide, or who knows? So in his view, he believes it's gonna be the iPhone 15, the iPhone 15 Plus, the Pro, and the Ultra, with the Ultra replacing the Pro Max, just like ming Chi Kuo was saying. And then finally, here's the really, really weird thing. Apparently there's an iPhone 
with no physical button and the project code name is Bongo. So no buttons on this iPhone. I'm not sure what this is gonna be, what it could be, maybe the iPhone Fold or maybe the iPhone 16 or 17. I'm not sure, but this was an interesting leak because Shrimp Apple Pro is actually very reliable. He was the first one to leak the new pill plus hole punch combo on the front display, which ended up being true. So with that said, let me give you guys some advice. Should you upgrade to the 14 Pro Max or should you wait for the Ultra? Well, first of all, I think that if you really, really care about USB-C, then you should probably wait. But I've realized that I don't really use the lightning port at all. Sometimes I'll plug into the lightning to charge, but I'm almost always using MagSafe. So lightning really isn't a big deal. And I don't really take a bunch of videos and photos and have to transfer them all the time. I don't really do entire iPhone backups, which would take forever using the lightning cable. I use basically AirDrop and then I get a new phone and I back it up through iCloud basically every single year. So it's not a big deal to me and honestly the new camera is really really good it's now topped the s22 ultra and a lot of the other phones the new 48 megapixel pro raw is really really good especially now that you can actually use a shortcut to auto convert from pro raw to hdic honestly this has been a great phone it's the first one with the new dynamic island and it's basically really good. So if you have, let's say an iPhone 10, iPhone 10s, maybe even an iPhone 12 model, it's probably worth it to upgrade. But if you do have an iPhone 12, 13, and you're very happy with it, you don't have very many issues, then I would probably recommend that you should wait till next year to get the iPhone 15 Pro or Ultra model. So with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, click the circle about to subscribe. Definitely check out one of those two videos right there, including your iPhone 14 buyer's guide, which helps you choose one of those models. Definitely check out that guide. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.